Hey there, Jeff Burkholder, executive producer with CAWorkshops.com. And this is going to be the first of our series here of photographer spotlights. What a photographer spotlight is, is where we spend some time with the photographer and get into the kind of the mindset of the photographer. Not so much about the technical aspects and such, but really what the art and the vision of that photographer is. Personally, I love hearing photographer stories myself and love seeing, of course, their work. First one here is going to be with a wonderful scenic photographer, John Paul, who's based in South Lake Tahoe, California. John Paul's work is an internationally known. He's a wonderful, wonderful photographer. Also, super cool guy. So we spent a day with John Paul in the beautiful South Lake Tahoe time, and well, let's see what John's work is like. Okay, well, here's the John Paul Gallery, and the way I've set things up, given that my preference is for much larger prints than most people do, um, I can't fit everything in the gallery. So, along with large frame pieces on the walls, I've got a lot of images in the bins here that people can flip through. Um, they're both examples of my work and pieces that are ready to kind of grab and go. A lot of people come in and buy gifts for people or, uh, or just leaf through and see a little bit more of my portfolio. I prefer not to have a small, small portfolio book here because I, I don't shoot with the purpose of producing 8 by 10 inch prints. My preference is uh, Honestly, if I had my way, 30 by 40 inches and 20 by 60 inch panoramics would be the smallest things I do. Um, that's not the real world where I am, um, but it is what I specialize in. Um, so I've got a number of, co of, uh, of matted pieces in both panoramic and traditional shapes. And I've got my coffee table book, which is called Visions of Lake Tahoe. And actually, we're down to the last couple hundred books. We've uh, we've sold through about 6,000 of these, and uh, along with images specifically of Lake Tahoe, uh, I was very fortunate to have an amazing man, the writer Ben Bova, uh, write the essay for the book, and he did it an absolutely spectacular job, and that was a real privilege, tying his name to my work. Um, as we walk through, um, along with the frame pieces on the walls, I've got a few things on easels. And then at the back of the gallery, which you'll be able to see, I have a full frame selection as well. And uh, one of the things I'm real proud of is the quality of the framing I'm doing. I think it, it really outdoes what most galleries, especially photography galleries, offer these days. Um, and another thing that I think is special is um, fairly recently, I chose to paint my walls a, uh, a very dark gray color. I used a no VOC environmentally friendly paint which is better for those of us working here. The other thing it does is it absorbs the ambient light in the room and it enabled me to take 50 percent of my light fixtures down both cutting my light bill in half, my electricity bill, um, but it also uses half the electricity and um, I figure with the subject matter that I, I care for I might as well walk the walk in every aspect of what I do. Well, one great thing to do would be to walk through the gallery and just show you a few images that I think are kind of unique that I get wonderful reactions from and tell you about why. Uh, the image here that I've named Echo Falls, which is taken in South Lake Tahoe here, um, just took this last October. And it's an image that I waited six years to photograph. For me, the conditions have to be just right. And I've seen numerous people photograph this spot um, they've used a little wider composition that added some things that I thought were uh, not beneficial to the image. But also, without being large format, they were soft as enlargements, and they didn't, uh, they didn't really give that amazing feeling that I knew was there. Um, this is a shot that required early snowfall, so there was water ready to flow, and then a warming a rainy day so that the creek was actually flowing because it doesn't flow most of the year along with perfect fall colors uh, at their peak and then an overcast day with everything wet and saturated um, brings out the rich color the overcast sky knocks down a lot of the harsh contrast and shadows that that can be there 
and it made for an absolutely, what I think in my mind was a perfect image. The long exposure that was required as well, about four seconds, gave that nice silky effect to the water and the water's just a beautiful contrast against that rich. Okay, so this is another image that is quite new for me. I took this at the end of January, which uh, is not that long ago. Uh, this is another image that I waited several years for. Um, I call this Wolf Moon Panorama, and I took this picture on my large format bellows camera using a two and a quarter by six and three quarter inch panoramic film back. Um, this is the full moon. The shot was taken about an hour to an hour and a half after sunset. We're looking directly back at South Shore. I had scouted a spot that gave me nice elevation that had adequate space between the trees so I can take an un unencumbered image of the south shore of Lake Tahoe. And one of the things uh, I'm thrilled with is I did have a cloud move perfectly in front of the moon and gave a nice softening effect. Um, wonderful light trail across the lake, but the sharpness of the image is so amazing that I can see the details on every individual tree and if I look closely, I can see the individual windows on the casinos, which um, from where I was standing are about 12, 13 miles away. Um, one of the reasons that I use the big film is I love the smoothness and the tonalities of the colors, but also that real sharpness, not a, not a synthetic look to it. And I, I like when people look at my images and come back to me years later and say, hey, you know what else I saw in there? So they're taken by the impact of the image initially, but then the subtlety of the details really hangs with them over the course of several years. And uh, I think that's what's something special about a really fine image. Uh, here are two more images that are wonderful examples of why I use both the large format bellows camera, but also large pieces of film. The panoramic here at the top um, which was taken in southwestern Colorado using my bellows camera and two and a quarter by six and three quarter inch film. The lighting conditions were amazing. The sharpness of the image is fantastic. And it's one of the images where I actually keep a damaged piece in the gallery because it appears to be so three dimensional that I actually have people walk right up to it and rub it because they, they think it's a painting. They, they want to feel whether or not their eye is fooling them with dimensionality. And that is really one of the main objectives as a photographer. We're printing a two-dimensional piece of paper, and our job is to use proper lighting and proper composition to give the feel of a three-dimensional subject. And that's a challenge, but when it happens, it's spectacular, and, it, and it's really exciting as an artist. Okay, well, this Denali picture.